Hello and welcome to this guide on how to build a simple Saturn V rocket in Kerbal Space Program 2. This is the rocket I'm going to show you how to build. So I'll start a new build and we'll get straight into it. First things first, we're going to go to the command section, grab the gumball command pod. Then we'll go to the coupling section, scroll all the way down and grab the small docking port and pop that on top. Next we'll scroll back up again, grab the TD-12 stack decoupler and before we place it we're going to flip it over so it's pointed straight down and that way when we decouple the launch escape system we won't then end up blocking the docking port. So for the launch escape system we'll go to engines, scroll down to solid fuel boosters and grab the LES bottle rocket and because I'm not too keen on that gap there I'm going to use the rotate and translate tool, I'm going to click on the decoupler and then I'm going to move it down one full notch. Next up we're going to add some parachutes so for that we'll go to utility. We're going to use the Mark 12 radial mount drogue parachutes to start off with and we need three of them and we're also going to use the Mark 16 main parachutes so we'll actually be able to land on the surface of Kerbin. Now because I'm not too keen on the way they stick out I'm also going to use the translate tool just to move them in uh, so they're sticking out a little bit from the surface of the command module. We need to be careful not to cover up the drogue parachute, otherwise it won't deploy. But as long as the main parachutes are uh, exposed, we should be fine. Then the next thing I'm also going to do is, uh, just in case we end up having to do any manoeuvres in the dark, it's always a good idea to have a couple of spotlights on the front of the ship. We're going to pop two on there. And a little tip for you, if you use the middle mouse button to click on any part, it will actually focus the camera on that specific part. And it just means uh, making adjustments is that a little bit easier. So I'll make sure it's pointing, they're pointed upwards. There we go, that should do the trick. And if you press C on your keyboard, you can disengage the magnet. And it just means you can make finer adjustments. Now the last thing we need to do on this is add the uh, heat shield. So we'll go to thermal, we'll grab the HS250 heat shield and we'll pop that on the bottom. And that is the command module done. So now it's time for the service module. Um, for that we're going to start off by going to the coupling section. We'll grab the TD25 stacked coupler. And then we're also going to go to the electrical section and grab the medium Z4K battery. And that just will give us a little bit more energy so we won't end up running out halfway through the mission. Now we need to add the fuel tank so we'll go to the fuel tank section. We'll first of all scroll down to the monopropellant tank section and we'll grab the FLR1 monopropellant tank. Then we'll go back up to the Methylox tanks and find the Z, sorry, the X216 Methylox tank. And because I'm not too keen on that gap, I'm going to use the rotate and translate tool just to move the Methylox, uh, the Methylox tank up to cover up the monopropellant tank. And then we also need an engine, so we'll go to engines and we'll grab the skipper engine and pop that on the bottom. Now we're also going to need some RCS control, so we'll go to utilities, we'll grab the RV105 RCS thruster, and we'll pop four of them on the side. And finally, we're going to add a high gain antenna, so if we go to the communication section, uh, we'll grab the Communitron HG5 antenna, and we only need the one, so if we press X or Shift X on our keyboard, we can get that down to one, and then if we press A or D, that will flip it over so it's facing downwards. Now because we're going to be building some fairing later on, we're also going to need to move this a little bit inboard. So we'll use the rotate and translate tool and because it's not on the sides or the front or back angle, we're going to need to move each of these arrows the same number of times. So I'm going to go three in this way and then three in this way. And then just to make it look a bit better, I'm also going to move it down slightly. There we go, now that is the service module finished. So next we're going to move on to the lunar excursion lander, uh, the LEM, the LEM as it's called. First we're going to start with the ascent stage because this is a two stage lander so we're going to go to coupling and we're going to grab the small stack separator, not the stack decoupler because if you use the decoupler then it will end up blocking the top of the LEM and you won't be able to dock with it. We're going to get rid of that fairing and we're going to start on the ascent stage of the LEM. So first thing we're going to go to is the docking ports, we're going to grab the small docking port, then we're going to go to structures, we're going to scroll down and we're going to grab the RM adapter plate, pop that on there. 
Next, we're going to go to the command section, grab the tuna can two-seat lander, add that, and then we're going to go to engines and grab the terrier engine and put that on the bottom. Now, for the fuel tank, we're going to go to fuel and we're going to use the R11 baguette fuel tanks on this one. So, we'll put eight of these on the bottom. And then, just to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm going to use the Rotate and Translate tool and just give it a bit of an angle so that it looks a bit more like you'd expect it to. There we go, that should do the trick. Now, we're also going to need some RCS control on this, so we'll go back to Utility, grab the RV-105 thrusters again, We'll shift tab down to four and we'll pop them on the side. And because these are only really needed for the rendezvous and docking maneuver when you're in orbit around the moon, we're going to right click on them and we're going to disable the thrust. Uh, now to be able to use them we also obviously need some fuel. So we'll go back to the fuel tanks, we'll scroll down to the monopropellant section and we'll add the Stratus V round field tanks. We're just going to pop four of these on the top. Obviously, if you want to use the uh, more of the RCS, then you'll need to add more fuel, but that will add more weight, which will make it a little bit more difficult to land. However, I'm just going to pop the four on because, as I said, we're only going to use the RCS for the rendezvous and maneuver, rendezvous and docking maneuver. Sorry, and I'm also going to just move them a little bit further in board like that. There we go. And the last thing we need to do on the lander is, on the ascent stage, should I say, is go to Utility, we'll scroll down, and we will grab the medium telescopic ladder. Make sure we're at one symmetry, and then we will place that just there. Uh, so it's nicely angled, and it looks good. So next we're going to move on to the descent stage, the bit we'll, that will actually get us onto the surface of the moon. So we'll first of all go to Coupling. We'll grab the medium stack decoupler again, pop that there, and I'm just going to get rid of that fairing, just because it looks a bit weird. Then we're going to go to structures again, grab the RM adapter, just like we did at the top, uh, flip that upside down and pop that there. Now, one thing I like to do with this lander, or any two-stage lander even, is pop a small or any kind of um, remote guidance unit and that basically means that when you leave it on the surface of the moon it won't be designated as debris and you won't you'll then be able to go back to it if you want to um, and it'll be easier not to delete it by accident so for the next bit we're going to add the engine so we'll go to engines and we'll add another terrier engine and for the fuel we're also going to use the same baguette fuel tanks and pop another eight of them on the bottom of this There we go. And I'm just going to use the Rotate and Translate tool to move it up a little bit. And just make it look a bit more like it should. There we go, that'll do it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some struts. So if we go to Structure and grab the struts, we'll pop a few of these on the side and that'll just mean that it won't be wobbling about like crazy and it'll just add more stability and the next thing or even the last thing we need to do really is add some landing legs so we'll go to ground we'll grab the wombat landing legs and instead of placing them on the side of the decoupler which uh, basically if you were to do that then when you decouple the bottom uh, or the top of the stage from the bottom it would end up also decoupling the legs and they look funny but um, it, it doesn't work for me so I'll pop them there go back to the rotate and translate tool and now I'm going to move them out so that it looks like they're connected to the side of the decoupler uh, once again because they're at a slight weird angle we're going to move each arrow the same number of times so I'll go one that way one that way and then one two three four five one two three four five and then move it up and there we go, that looks pretty good to me. So, just for the look of it actually, I'm going to move these down a further one full notch and then I'm going to click on the uh, remote guidance unit and move that up uh, and that way it just looks a bit better at the bottom, I think. So, 
One final thing I'm going to do, a little bit like we did with the uh, CSM, we're going to add some lights to it as well. So we'll go down, we'll grab the same narrow field spotlights, I'm going to pop a few on the bottom, and therefore if we end up landing in the dark, we'll be able to actually see our landing point. And then I'm just going to add a couple on the top as well, just so once again, when we're doing the rendezvous and docking manoeuvre, we can actually uh, see what we're doing. I'll just make sure these are pointed upwards and they look a little bit better. There we go, and I'm just going to do a little bit of editing on this one as well. So I like things to be nice and flush. So that is the command module and the lunar module finished. Next, we're going to move on to the S4B orbital and TLI stage, the bit which will get you into orbit and send you to the moon. So we'll start off by going to coupling. We'll grab the extra small stack decoupler, pop that on the bottom of that engine. I'm just going to get rid of that fairing as well. There we go. And then we are going to go to payload. There it is. And grab the large uh, Airstream protective fairing adapter. Now, before we do anything with the fairing, I'm also going to add some struts just to make it more stable. So we'll go to util uh, sorry, structures. We'll add eight struts onto here. And that just means that everything will be much more stable and it won't be wobbling about like crazy and looking like a floppy banana when you launch. So to create the fairing, you highlight the fairing adapter, click on the spanner icon, and then you can move these arrows up. Um, now, a little tip for this is it's not a good idea to watch the top of the fairing um, itself because that isn't generally a good representation of how you're doing. Uh, what I do is I keep an eye on the arrows. So that arrow is now lined up with the bottom of the LEM, uh, the CSM, sorry. And then if you move this one in, so the green arrow lines up with the side and press the tick button, it finishes the fairing nice and easy and you don't get any clashes. So now, as I said, we're going to move on to the S4B stage. So for that, we're going to start off by going to command. We're going to scroll down and grab the large remote guidance unit, put that there. Then we're going to go to the fuel tank section, scroll down and find the large methalox tanks and get the S3 7200 methalox tank. Pop that there. And just to make sure we've got enough control, we're going to go to utility, grab the large reaction wheel and put that on the bottom for the engine we're going to go to engines and we're going to use the rhino engine we'll put that there and something i like to do although it's not strictly necessary is i also like to add some separation motors so we're going to add four of these separation motors onto the top and the key thing here is to have them pointed upwards because if they are um well, basically what this does is it will pull this stage away from the CSM and LEM when we decouple them. And that just uh, is a little bit safer than extending the orbit of the CSM and LEM. So I'll move them inboard. And that is the S4B stage finished. Now we'll move on to the S2 stage. So for that, we're going to start by going to coupling again and grabbing the extra large stack decoupler and putting that there. Um, because we've left the fairing on, it's now given us that nice angled fairing. But it's always a good idea to add struts between any stages or any connection points even, really. So we're going to press the eye icon on the thing, make it see through, go back to utility, uh, sorry, go back to structure, grab the struts and we're going to put another eight struts on there just like we did with the service module and place them on the bottom then we're going to move on to the fuel tanks uh, we'll start off by going to fuel tanks and going down to the extra large section and we will use the s for uh, 25,600 metal ox tank we'll put that there uh, i'm also going to add a few separation motors to this one so we'll just pop a few on the side and once again we'll make sure they're pointed upwards. And for the engines, we are going to go to structures to start off with. Grab the extra large multi-engine mount, 
put that there. Then we'll go to engines. We will grab the small vector engine. We'll put one of them in the center. And then we'll grab another one and we'll put four more of them just around the outside. And that will give you the uh, five engine setup that you have on the S2 stage. Now, what I'd like to do first is I'll right click on the center engine. I will disable the fairing. And then if you right click on the engine mount you'll be able to change this marker here and we're going to make it around about two meters i'll say two meters in length for that fairing keep it at shroud and that that way when you go to coupling and grab the extra large stack decoupler you can then connect it to the node which is a part of the engine mount and not the engine and that will give you this nice fairing so because it's getting a bit tall now, I'm going to grab the assembly anchor. I'm going to move it up a little bit. I think I'm going to move it up a little bit further. And then we're going to move on to the S1C stage, which is the first stage which will uh, give you your initial ascent. So for that, we'll go back to fuel tanks. We'll scroll down and we will grab the long S451200 Methalox tank. Uh, put one of them on the bottom there. We're going to grab the structures section and go for the same multi-engine mount. Put that on the bottom. And for the main engines, we'll use the uh, medium mainsail engines. So we'll start by putting one in the middle like we did with the last stage. And then we'll put another four around the sides. And that will give you the nice five engine configuration you find on the Saturn V. So to make this look a bit nicer, we're then going to go to aerodynamics, grab the medium nose cone, pop four of them on there, scroll down and grab the small stabilizer, pop four on the side of the methalox tank. And using the translate tool, we're going to just move them down so that the top lines up with the top of the nose cone there we go so I believe the last thing we need to do now uh, is just add some launch clamps so once again we'll go to structures we'll grab the launch clamps we'll pop four on the sides and that will just mean that it'll stay stable on the launch pad and we won't end up accidentally uh, well it won't fall over as we launch uh, having five engines on the bottom will make it more stable but it's always good to have launch clamps just to be safe so that is pretty much the entire saturn 5 built so now comes possibly the most important part of any build in Kerbal Space Program, whether it be one or two, and that is organising the staging stack. Uh, instead of taking you through that now, what I'll do is I will skip the video forward and once this is done I'll run you through it all then. Okay, so now that's done I'll quickly run you through the staging order. In number one we have the five engines on the first stage along with the launch clamps. In number two, we have the five engines on the second stage, along with the decoupler between the first and second stages. Then in number three, we have the launch escape system and the uh, decoupler for that. In number four, we've got the decoupler between the second and third stages, along with the four separation motors on the second stage. Then in number five, we have the main engine on the third stage. And in number six, we have the fairing and the decoupler between the CSM and the LEM. In number seven, we have the decoupler at the bottom of the LEM, which connects it to the third stage, along with the four separation motors on the first stage, third stage. Sorry. Then in number eight, we have the engine on the CSM. In number nine, we have the descent engine for the LEM. And in number 10, we've got the decoupler in the middle of the LEM along with the ascent engine for the LEM. Then in number 11, we have the decoupler between the command module and the service module. In number 12, we have the three drogue parachutes. And finally, in number 13, we have the three main parachutes. 
So there was a couple of things I realised I'd forgotten to uh, put in when I was doing the main build. Um, the first one is we need to put some struts between the first and second stages, otherwise it's very unstable. So we're going to grab the struts and we're just going to pop eight in and instead of doing it in between the stages as we've done before, we're going to click on the top of the tank uh, for the first stage and place them on the bottom of the tank for the second stage. And then with the rotate and translate tool, we're just going to use that to move it inboard. And um, if anything, this actually makes it a tiny bit more stable. Uh, so it might be worth trying that uh, elsewhere in the rocket if you're having any other issues with the stability. But that's that done. And then the other thing which we really need to do is we need to add some electricity on, or extra electricity onto the LEM. Uh, because it turns out it doesn't quite have enough if you spend a long time on the surface of Kerbin, uh, of the moon. Sorry. So for that, we're going to go to the electrical section. And instead of taking it apart to put a battery on, I'm just going to go down. I'm going to grab a PBNUK radioscopic uh, thermo generator, or RTG. I think it's thermoelectric generator, actually. Uh, but either way, it means the same thing. Then we're going to go to one symmetry and I'm just going to pop one of these on there. You can put more if you want, um, but obviously the more stuff you add, the heavier it gets. And the heavier it gets, the more difficult it is to land it on the surface of the moon. Uh, and the whole point in having a lander as opposed to having all a, the lander in all one uh, thing is it's much lighter and it's much easier to land. So the last thing that I'm going to do, and this is more just my personal preference, um, I'm just going to paint the service module uh, because I, personally I don't like the black um, on it and to do that we'll go to the colour manager and I want the accent to match the base colour so for that I'm going to click on the base, we can see the dots there and I'm going <laughs> to click on the accent again and put the dot roughly in the same place and it doesn't have to be exact as long as it's roughly in the same place then is it's very hard to actually see the difference and then the other thing uh, the main thing to do is to make sure you've got the parts button selected because if you use assembly then when you click on something it will change the color of every part of the assembly um, so now i've done that i'm just going to quickly paint all of the different parts of the csm and there we go and that is pretty much all there is to it um, just need to redo the fairing and that rocket will be ready to launch so yeah if uh, if you enjoyed this video and you found it to be quite informative um, please try building the rocket yourself see how it works uh, you might need to do a little bit of tweaking here and there just to get it to your liking but otherwise it's uh, yeah that's how you build a simple Saturn V rocket in Kerbal Space Program 2 I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please feel free to like it and subscribe and also I would appreciate it if you would leave a comment below and uh, let me know what you thought. Anyway, if, uh, if you did like it I'll hopefully see you in the next one. See you later.